our Lord and King, we thank you tonight for the honor that it is for us to be here. Lord, we ask that you will visit your name. Do us good by all means. For thine alone is the kingdom, the glory forever. Say, Amen. Amen. All right. Um, we answer the question before when Jesus says said on me the works that I do shall he do also than these shall he do unto the father what has unto the father what has it got to do of believers to do the works of Jesus and we traced in the same Johannine uh, corpus that more than one places established that relationship between his going and ability to do greater works because Jesus said that he said, it is expedient for you that I go. Go not away. The comforter will not come. So, predicated on the departure of Jesus. Entity of the comforter. And in the same 14th chapter, verse 26, he said, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name. He shall teach you all things and bring all things to us, whatsoever I have. The coming together of everything was pretty straightforward, isn't it? That Jesus said, people that believe in me, the works that I do, they will do greater works than those they will do because I go to the Father. And the reason why our ability to do those works of Jesus and even to do greater works than those would be tied to Jesus' departure. Spirit is the person of the Trinity by which we are going to be able to do the works of God in that sense. Remember, remember that we does not come to you just uh, to represent God alone. The Holy Spirit comes to you in the place of God. It brings God to a believer. So that we say that when I say the, that God lives in my heart, it is by the Holy Spirit that God lives in my heart. Now, you also realize that according to um, chapter 1 verse 8 you will receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you that the Holy Spirit is the custodian he is the administrator he is the manager and the capital of heaven that is to say the Holy Spirit is the one that is in charge of the administration of the power of God alright that means that no person, no believer of God without a prior and ideally an ongoing relationship that is grounded in the person of the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit is the one that administers the power of God. But remember that the Holy Spirit 
as they are and not one and the same things. The Holy Spirit is a person. The power of God is a The Holy Spirit is a person. The Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit is the same. I know that there are some people that <laughs> they have a line of Rema that says that uh, the Holy Ghost is not the same as the Holy Spirit. Please, it's a lie. The Holy Ghost is the same as the Holy Spirit. Is that okay? Holy Ghost is just old KJV verbiage. Ghost is spirit. Hello? The word ghost is a synonym for the word spirit. The Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit. If somebody say, ah, we saw a ghost, what did you think they are saying they saw? It's a spirit. For God's sake. Anyway, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit is a person. And the power of God is a resource. But there is such a close relationship between the Holy Spirit and the power of God. Such that you would not attain to the power of God without a relationship and an interface with the Holy Spirit. But it's important that as closely related as they are, so much that... Uh, even sometimes biblically, uh, those words can be used quite synonymously and interchangeably. We must learn to respect the distinction because the Holy Spirit is a person and he is the one that is in custody of the power of God. So you can, when you have the Holy Spirit, when you have received the Holy Spirit, you now have the administrator of the power of God, which means that power is now within reach. Hello? Hello? It means that power is now within reach. But it does not mean that power is now automatic. Jesus said, you shall receive power after that the Holy Spirit is come upon you. Not before. The Holy Spirit is prior to power. So, I used to tell people that sometimes when your journey with the Holy Ghost begins, he comes with power and it's like he puts it under his armpit. And he say, I want to have something to do with you. Let's, let's roll and see. And uh, as time goes on, you see this thing here? I'll be I'll be giving you small, small. I'll be giving you small, small. This is why it is possible for people to increase in the anointing. Because the anointing is synonymous with power in my lecture now. Alright? I'm using the word power and anointing as synonyms. You can increase in the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit is a person. The anointing is his resource. It's, it's almost like having a billionaire father. You may have a billionaire father that does not trust you with billions. Right? Yes. He, he is he's a billionaire and he's your dad. And both of you are not quarreling. There's no problem between both of you. But even a car has not been given to you yet because you have not matured to the level where you can manage that kind of resource that your father has, that your father longs for you to have. So that there's a sense in which if, if you have a billionaire father, you are, you are almost a billionaire. Glory to God. But as our people used to say, almost cannot kill a bird. You are not far from being a billionaire. At least, it, it, it means that billionaire possibilities are within reach. They are within reach. It's almost like saying, ah, the way this your situation is now, if you behave well, you can easily become a billionaire. You know, it's very different from some of us. Hello? Hello? Uh, some of us, in the equation of becoming a billionaire, behaving well, is not is not a capital low. 
Or, okay, is it because you have not behaved well that you are not a billionaire? <laughs> there are some people that the only thing separating them from billionaire status is just good behavior. It's not availability of the billions. Hello? Hello? Your own, the thing separating you from billionaire. Let's just say it's legion. <laughs> because if we want to, to, to list it, it will not take all our time this evening. We won't preach this sermon again. But there are some people that there is just one thing that separates them from billionaire status. And it is good behavior. If you can just behave well, I sign the check. Because the pepper is already resting is, is here. That is the situation of the believer with power. Once you have received the Holy Spirit, you have received the manager, the administrator of all of the power of the one that dwells between the cherubim. But the release of that capital, of that resource to you is quite a different thing. This is why in scripture you would notice that the Bible always comes up with this distinction or progression of going from spirit to power, from spirit to power, from spirit to power. Or in some places a combination of the language of spirit and power. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and what? Power. Spirit and power. Paul said to the Corinthians, For my speech and my word was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but it was in the demonstration of the spirit and of power. Spirit and power. When Jesus Christ came out of the waters of baptism, the Bible says in, in Luke chapter 4, verse 1, right? In Luke's gospel chapter 4, verse 1, Jesus is baptized, and as he comes out of the waters, the Bible says he was full of the Holy Spirit. And Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit. So it's If you check the Greek in that verse, it's the same word. Spirit in the same verse. And Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the Verse 2, please. Being 40 days tempted of devil, and in those days he did eat nothing, and when they were word haunted. How did Jesus get into the wilderness? Full of the Holy Ghost. Jesus was going into the wilderness from Jordan. The Bible says he was full of the Holy Ghost. And tonight is not when I do that, but I need to put you on notice that in this dimension, when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, the first thing that the Holy Spirit brings is government. Let me hear you say government. Let me hear you say government. If you read the Makan account of this episode, the Makan account says, and immediately the Spirit drove him into the wilderness. That means the Spirit drove him into the wilderness immediately. Immediately after what? Immediately after his baptism, as he came out of the waters and the Spirit of God came upon him and that voice that brought the affirmation of his sonship, this is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased, and the Spirit descended upon him. The Bible says, and immediately, immediately, the Spirit driveth him into the wilderness. Immediately, the Spirit became his driver. I'm saying that when the Holy Ghost comes upon you in this dimension, the first thing that he brings is what? Government. It is written differently in Romans chapter 8, verse 14, that as many as are led 
led by the Spirit. Led by the Spirit is government. There's therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and of death. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh. God sending his son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemned sin in the body. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. When the spirit of God comes upon your life, the first thing he brings is what? Government. And your cooperation or your submission to that government actually is part of the assessment that is used to determine how much of the resource that is called power that the Holy Ghost carries that the Holy Ghost in reality will entrust you with. Did you get what I just said? Hello? I'm saying that when, when you receive the Holy Spirit, okay, like Jesus promised, because he says the works that I do, you will do also greater works than this you will do because I go to the Father. And we said the idea is when Jesus goes to the Father, then the Holy Spirit will come. So now we have moved to Holy Spirit. So when the Holy Spirit comes, how does this whole thing work? Because it's not by might. It's not by power. It's by my spirit, says the Lord. And the spirit of God exerts the power of God in order to achieve the work of God. So, when you're dealing with the Holy Spirit is going to begin, it begins with government. Government means government. lordship. He impresses upon you the righteous and the just demand of our king God. The king over the universe. He has he rules by decrees and it's a, it is the Holy Spirit that impresses the demands the just and the righteous demands of God upon your life. So that as you cooperate by obeying as you cooperate by obeying, as you cooperate by obeying, you are becoming not just an obedient believer, not just an obedient Christian, but that obedience has the capacity to shape you into a creature after a spiritual order that, hello, hello, you know that when they say, somebody is a doctor, a medical doctor, I hope you know it's not a gift. <laughs> you know, there's nobody that has a gift of doctor. But eventually they are called doctors. Even when the guy is sleeping, that is a doctor sleeping. It, it is now who he is. He became that doctor by a series of attendants to measured disciplines that were meted out by an institution. And it is in conforming and conforming and conforming. You go to lab, you attend lectures, you do viva, you do this. And these are individual activities that are required by the institution. As you keep doing them, doing them, doing them, doing them, doing them, and doing them effectively and doing them as required. A day will come that you transition from doing those things to now being something. You studied chemistry. You did microbiology. You did, you know, anatomy. You did this, you did that. You did all kinds of courses. In the end, they now say, he's a medical doctor. I'm saying that when you cooperate with the government of the Holy Spirit, huh? It, it means you are like an obedient Christian. But that's not all. That, that obedience that you bring to the table eventually huh? eventually it adds up into something that you become in the Holy Spirit. 
you become a creature by reason of consistent adherence and submission to the government that the Holy Spirit brings upon you. You are not just an obedient Christian. That's important because that's the part to it. The same way that a doctor is not going to be a good student forever. Before the doctor becomes a doctor, he was a student. But one day, suddenly he transitioned from being a student, a medical student, to being a doctor. Just one day. But that day is the result of, well, it depends on your university. It is, is six plus N. It's a result of six plus N years. Hallelujah. Because so, it, it, there are some universities that you come into as a teenager, as a medical student, and, and you graduate as a granddad. After nine years, finally. So sometimes when you see the way those medical students jubilate, it's years that compound them. But on that day of induction, they pronounce you a doctor. The only way you got there to becoming a doctor is that you were attending lectures, you were doing your tests, you were passing your exams, attending lectures, doing your posting, doing your word rounds, going for this seminar, doing that, doing this, doing that, doing this. There now comes that everything finally compounds and the result is an identity. Doctor. Are you with me? I'm saying that when you follow the Holy Spirit, you will soon become something. The obedience will compound. You will become something, something that has a name, that has a unique identity, a creature that has been waved on account of willing submission to the just and righteous government that the Holy Ghost has exerted upon and over your life consistently. And I can say to you that today, to that becoming there is no end. There's no end. So when the Holy Spirit comes, the first thing he brings is what? Government. Do this. Don't do it. Go here. Don't go there. Say this. Don't say it. If I were Jesus, after baptism in the Jordan River, it wouldn't be a bad idea to go home and change your raiment, change your clothing, but as he came out of water, Holy Spirit had descended upon him. The Bible said immediately, the Spirit drove him into the wilderness. Luke said the Spirit led him. Being full of the Holy Spirit, of the Holy Ghost, the Spirit led him into the wilderness to be tempted. Being tempted 40 days, of the devil. The Bible says, and in those days, he did eat nothing. And when they were ended, he afterward hungered. So it was that hunger that the, Holy, that, the, that the devil used to begin the next phase of temptation. Remember that he was tempted 40 days. Hello? According to Luke chapter 4 verse 2, he was tempted for how many days? 40 days. The temptations of Jesus that are recorded were recorded post the 40 days of temptation. It was, hello, are you, are you with me? It was after the 40 days of temptation had ended that he became hungry. And Satan now said, hey, hey, there was something I couldn't do these 40 days that I was tempting you. Please, 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 please. Something just came up. What is it? You know this hunger that is harassing you now. If you turn these stones to bread, it, it will do something. If 
And if you are the son of God, why will you not do it? So, the three temptations of Jesus that are recorded for us were the temptations after the temptations. Okay, give me verse 2. Verse 2, please. Being what? Read, let me hear loud and clear. Being. So, how many days was he tempted of the devil? 40 days. 40 days. So, at the very least, at the very least, there would probably have been 40 temptations, even if Satan was doing one per day. There would have been at least 40. He was 40 days tempted of the devil. The Bible says, and in those days, what days are those? Those 40 days of being tempted of the devil. In those days, he did eat nothing. And when they were ended, what is a day? The 40 days of being tempted of the devil. When those temptation days were over, were ended, he afterward hungered. All right? So this hunger now is after the 40 days that he had been tempted of the devil. And then verse 3 says, And the devil that had tempted him for 40 days, and the devil said unto him, If you are the son of God, command this stone that it be made bread. So this temptation now, the number, the sequence, the, its number on the temptation list, we don't know. It's just that as far as afterward is concerned, this was the first temptation afterward. Are you there? But there were before that time, there were already 40 days of temptation. None of the temptations in those 40 days are recorded anywhere for us. But my point is this. When Jesus Christ was going through all of this, Remember that the precursor to it is Jesus Christ, full of the Holy Ghost, was led into the wilderness. Full of the Holy Ghost. Full of the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost brought government. And that government is rulership, leadership. The Holy Spirit drove him into the wilderness. And he went. When these 40 days of temptation were over, and the temptation after the days of temptation happened, and they were over, now, let's look at verse 11. The same passage. Verse 13. And when the devil had ended all the temptation, the one in the 40 days and the one afterward, when he had ended all the temptation, he departed from him for how long? For a season, verse 14. And Jesus returned. How? How did he return? He returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee. And there went out a fame of him through all the region round about. So Jesus Christ returned in the power of the Spirit that led him into the wilderness. Remember that in verse 1, he was full of the Holy Ghost. In verse 14, he returned in the power of the Holy Ghost that he was full of. So that there was this period between Jesus Christ being full of the Holy Ghost and Jesus Christ His record of power. For him, there was a space of 40 days. That 40 days was like the conversion period. Where Jesus Christ went from Holy Ghost to Holy Ghost and power. There's Holy Ghost and there's Holy Ghost and power. And Jesus himself said, you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you. You know, that was the same thing that happened with Jesus. The sequence for Jesus was also the same. He also received power. After what? After that, the Holy Ghost had come upon him. 
So in Jesus' journey into that place of explosive, powerful ministry was an encounter with the Holy Ghost. And then in the context of that encounter and with the right attitude to the government that the Holy Ghost brought upon Jesus, we now saw Jesus entering into power possibilities. There were different things that the Holy Ghost intends to show us on account of the pilgrimage of Jesus in the wilderness in those 40 days. Because Jesus Christ is a pattern son. Hello. Hello. Jesus Christ is a pattern son. And part of it is to say to us that the, the children of Israel, you remember the children of Israel? The children of Israel were supposed to do a journey in the wilderness for 40 days. That ended up taking how long? They spent 40 years for something that could have been done in 40 days. When Jesus came, he spent 40 days in the wilderness for something that should have been done for 40 days. Because he's a pattern son. You remember when he came out of, when Joseph brought him out of Egypt, they said that it might be fulfilled. Out of Egypt have I called my son. And when that call happens, happened in, with, the, with the physical Egypt, they were supposed to have made their journey, their wilderness experience was supposed to have lasted 40 days. And then they will be in the land of promise. But it eventually lasted 40 years. When the true Israel of God came, he also had his own season in the wilderness. And he did not stay in the wilderness one day beyond those 40 days. To let us know that God was not being unreasonable. Maybe you don't get the point still. The point is that you can prolong your days in the wilderness. You know you are the one that can run out of time. Have you realized? <laughs> You know, I tell people not to play waiting game with God. If God is waiting for you, don't wait for him. Huh? Because God has all eternity to wait. You, you don't even have time. So it's a very unwise thing to play a waiting game with God. So yeah, and that was what they were doing in the book of Hagar. In the book of Hagar, they were basically saying, God, if you change our status, we will build your house. God said, if you build my house, I will change your status. Can I tell you who is already on the losing end? <laughs> it's the people. <laughs> God said, if you build my house, it's because you abandoned it. That's why I put hole inside your pocket. If you build the house, huh? uh -uh, I will change your condition. The people say, no, if you change our condition, we will build your house. So God is waiting for them to build the house so he can change their condition. They are waiting for God to change their condition so that they can build the house. You know they will die waiting. Oh. <laughs> Don't play a waiting game with a God that inhabits eternity. It's a losing game. So wisdom, wisdom instructs on this wise. When you hear his voice this day, harden not your heart. The greatest, the most profitable posture that you must carry, that you can carry, is a posture of submission and total obedience to the will of God. <laughs> As they used to say on PR TV. They say with, um, how do they used to say it now? With, with sorrow or something like that and total submission with deep sense of loss and total submission to the will of God we the family of huh? we the family of they now call the person's name Obadiah wish to announce the passing away to glory of our father, grandfather, great-grandfather, uncle, and teacher. So I used to say, what options do you actually have? 
deep sense of loss, I can understand that. With total submission to the will of God. Now, if you don't want to submit to the will of God, what will you do? You will go and wake the man. <laughs> they say with deep sense of loss and total submission to the will of God. I say, wait, even if you don't submit, what will you do? You will refuse to bury the man. <laughs> That's not a very wise place to be using that kind of language because you are helpless about it. It is when you have a choice that we can tell if you are totally submitted to the will of God. And that is while you are alive in matters of volition. When the Holy Spirit says to you when you woke up tomorrow morning and he said, we are not eating today. That one you can say total submission to the will of God. Because you already made your stew from this evening. And you had plans for tomorrow morning. In fact, you see I have half loaf of bread that is looking at you conspicuously. On the shelf somewhere. With some, I don't know why people use these days. Even stew can go with it. And you already made your stew from this evening. You can use your stew on one slice, on the other slice, and merge it together is Nigerian sandwich. <laughs> so you don't even need to boil the rice in order to break your fast. That's if you, well, you know, when I officially stopped eating breakfast, that was one of the things that helped me. I said, sure, I will fast first if I break it. You wake up in the morning and start eating food and they say it's breakfast. I say, you if you say it's break sleep, I can understand. You just came out of sleeping. <laughs> as, if, as if even if you didn't want to fast, you could have been eating while you were sleeping. So what you did before you are coming to eat is sleep, not fast. Sorry, I know people do fasting blood sugar, but it's, it's not fast. You were sleeping. It's just that the sleep deprived you of eating food. This is your mind is not inside it. So if you want it to be breakfast, let me fast with my full chest. Huh? Consciously. Then I can now say, now I want to break my fast. Where's my breakfast? So sometimes when I come back in the evening and I ask my children, I say, Where's my breakfast? They will now come and educate me. As if they're educating me. I say, Dad, dad is not breakfast, it's dinner. I say, it's me that I'm talking. I'm the one that knows <laughs> where I'm talking from. This is my own breakfast. Uh, people used to say, now when person wake up in your morning. <laughs> it's, this is my breakfast. In, in that kind of matter, you can say submission, total submission to the will of God. Because if you choose that morning, when the Holy Spirit says, we are not eating today, you can say, Satan, I bind you. <laughs> the, the skill with which I made that stew last night has to be of God. The same God cannot come around this morning. I have not made this stew. This tasty. The, ah, Satan, you are, I know you are bad. Everywhere that there's something good, you are always there to spoil it. I bind you. Some of you will say, Lord, can we do it tomorrow? You know, you know, so that I can be fully prepared. <laughs> Hello? Hello? That is how to prolong your days in the wilderness. Government. Government. Your response to the government of the Holy Spirit determines how long you will labor in drought before you enter into the terrain of power. So, the Holy Ghost has the power. It's under his armpit. He's watching you. Say, so this one is not compliant enough. 
If you give him power, he'll become a tyrant. Huh? This one is not malleable. We can't govern this one. And if we cannot govern him, we cannot make him a governor. And because you are not submitted to authority, you realize that things don't submit to your authority. That man says, I am a man under authority. And I have soldiers under me. That's how it works. That's why those, partly why those, that demons. Paul, we know. Jesus, we know. Who are you? Because we can't see any emblem of. You are not. There's no government. There's no structure over your life. Who are you? Who are you? They didn't say, what is your name? What is your name is the easiest question to answer. Who are you? If they ask you who are you, you know, the answer can be anything. Sometimes it depends on who is asking you. Who are you? That's why sometimes some people say, you, you are talking to me like that. Do you know who I am? I said, even me, I was going to ask, who are you? <laughs> Who are you? So sometimes when you drive and you meet these our good friends on the road and say, May we know you please? You call your name. They say, Okay, so what what do you do? Where do you live? Where are you coming from? They are trying to harvest as much information as possible in order to know where to place you. And there is a who you become in, in the process of submission to the will of God. You become the kind of person that God can trust with the power of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit that you already have. If you are still here, say amen. amen. In Acts of the Apostles, if my memory serves me right, I read that second to the last scripture. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 6. Ah, no, you can't be second to the last. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 6. All right? Let's read from about verse 4. Verse 4. Okay. But we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. Let's read. And the same pleased the whole multitude, and they chose Stephen, a man full of what? Faith and of the Holy Ghost. Stephen was a man full of faith and of the Holy Ghost and Philip and Prochorus and Nicanor and Timon and Parmenas and Nicholas a proselyte of Antioch. Let's read on. Whom they said before the apostles and when they had prayed they laid hands on them and the word of God increased and the number of the disciples multiplied in Jerusalem greatly and a great company of the priests were obedient to the faith. Verse 8. And Stephen full of what? Faith and power did great wonders and miracles among the people. So the first time we're introduced to, um, to Stephen here, we're told that he was full of faith and the Holy Ghost. In verse 8. In verse 4, in verse 5. In verse 8, we are now told that the same, the same man, Stephen, is full of what? Faith, but now and power. So he went from faith and the Holy Ghost to faith and power. There's always the transition from power, from Holy Ghost to power. From Holy Ghost to what? To power. And the moment the power came into the equation, look at what happened. He now did great wonders. Great wonders. And miracles among the people. Because it is the power of God that goes into executing miracles, signs and wonders. But that power of God is held and it is administered by the Holy Spirit of God. So, if you are going to arrive at power, you cannot bypass the Holy Spirit. But the fact that you have arrived at Holy Spirit does not mean that you have automatically entered into power. Are you here? Are you here? 
Are you here? In Acts of the Apostles, let's shorten this journey so that we can start to pray. In Acts of the Apostles chapter 4, you remember that in chapter 4, the apostles, Peter and John, had just been harassed by the religious leaders of the land because they had raised the man that was born lame, crippled on both feet that sat by the beautiful gate in chapter 3. When they were accosted and then finally they put them in jail overnight, the next morning they tried to harass them. It didn't work so much because they said that a notable miracle has been done. We cannot deny it. But that this thing does not spread any further. Let's call them and threaten them. So they call them and charge them. Don't preach anymore in this name. If you do it, we will do you something. Peter said, you guys should judge. Whether it is right in the sight of God to obey you rather than God. For we cannot but speak the things that we have both seen and heard. So when they threatened them, Sha, they left them. When Peter and John left, what did they do? They went to meet their own company. And they reported everything that happened to them unto their company. And then they lifted up their voice and began to pray. Part of that prayer that they prayed is captured in uh, the 29th verse of the book of Acts of the Apostles and the fourth chapter. And the Bible says, And now, Lord, verse 29, And now, Lord, 429, Behold their threatenings, and grant unto thy servants that with all boldness they may speak thy word. By stretching forth thine hand to heal, and that signs and wonders may be done by the name of your holy child Jesus. And when they had prayed, let me hear you say, when they had prayed. Let me hear you say, when they had prayed. The Bible says, and when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together and they were filled, they were all, all, all filled with the Holy Ghost. This all included Peter, included John, included Andrew, the twelve. It included the 120 that were in the upper room on the day of Pentecost that were full of the Holy Ghost and then opened their mouth and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. The same people, some of those same people are praying again in chapter 4. And the Bible is saying, and, they, and when they had prayed, the place was shaking where they were assembled together and they were all filled. Not just the newcomers among them. They were all filled. Peter was filled before. He's been full again. John was filled before. He's been filled again. Andrew was filled before. He's been filled again. Bartholomew was filled before. He's been filled again. Matthias was filled before. He's been full again. But remember that the precursor to this feeling was and when they had prayed. Prayer. The place was shaking where they were assembled together. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And they spoke the word of God with what? With boldness. They spoke the word of God with boldness. And the multitude of them that had believed were of one heart and of one soul. Neither said any of them that aught of the things which he possessed was his own. But they had all things common. Verse 33. And with great power. Did you see that? Did you see that? They were all filled with the Holy Ghost. They spoke the word of God with boldness. But the Bible says, but it was with great power that the apostles gave witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And great grace was upon them all. Those apostles, the Bible says great power was how they gave witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. This means that and this is where we begin to pray. This means that the apostles, when they went around, they were telling people, he's alive, amen, he's alive. Jesus is alive forever, he's alive, amen. Other people now say, 
He's alive. Amen. He's alive. Amen. Zeus is alive. Forever is alive. Amen. If you can sing, we can sing too. The apostle says, not only sing, we can sing both. We didn't. It was not only choir that we brought. Say, so what do you mean? They said, you know the kind of things Jesus did when Jesus was alive. They say, yes. They say, well, since you guys think Jesus is dead, we are going to prove to you that Jesus is still alive. How do you mean? Say, don't worry. So what they did was that the same things that Jesus used to do when Jesus was alive, now that they thought Jesus Christ is dead, because some of them even believed the lies that the priest, the high priest, instigated the soldiers to tell. When they said, eh, even though we cannot find his body, it was his disciple that stole the body. The soldiers were sleeping. The disciples snuck in there and stole his body. That's why we can't find his body in the tomb. They say, don't worry. <laughs> we have more than that. You will see Jesus walking now. Now. So when they healed that man that was lame by the beautiful gate of the temple, the man was over 40 years. And the Bible said they laid him they disputed. This is not an arranging miracle. Some of the people judging Peter and John. If, if, if they might have even given that man money before. That's why they said, hey, we want to deal with these guys, this John and Peter. But that a notable miracle has this day been done, we cannot deny it. Jesus, that God will give you something, something that is made in heaven, that will be the stopper of the wicked intention of wicked men when they are in power. That people these guys. They are ignorant. They are unlearned men. They hadn't gone to any recognized rabbinic institution. Where did they get this boldness? How did they come about this kind of ministry? You know what happened eventually? The Bible said then they took notice. They remembered. What was it they remembered? They had been with Jesus. Hello? Long after they thought they had killed Jesus, and that Jesus had been buried. Hello. They say, you know what? We remember now. This was the kind of thing that Jesus used to do. When he was alive. These guys are ordinary ignorant people. How is it that we are seeing them do the kind of things. That only Jesus did when he was alive. They say that is what we are trying to tell you. What we are trying to tell you is that Jesus Christ he is still alive. Not that he was alive. He's alive. Amen. He's alive. Jesus is alive forever. He's alive. Amen. It is with great power that we bear witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. When we are going to tell people, he's alive! We do that talk with great power. And bearing witness to resurrection means showing people that Jesus is still alive. That he is raised from the dead. And because Jesus is raised from the dead, he continues to do what Jesus does. That was how the apostles, that was how they bore witness. But you know the reason I'm telling you all this is because Jesus has said, the works that I do, you will do also. And greater works than these will you do because I go unto the Father. And we said the going unto the Father is because if Jesus does not go to the Father, the Holy Spirit will not come. And the coming of the Holy Spirit is because the Holy Spirit is the custodian of the power. 
power of God. And without him, you will not be able to do the works of Jesus. Because without the Holy Spirit, Jesus Christ did not go into public ministry. Jesus entered into public ministry after the Holy Ghost descended upon him in the waters of Jordan. And he went into the wilderness for 40 days. And then he came back accredited as, an, as, as a wielder. You know what I mean by wielder? Somebody that can wield as a handler, as a manifester or a manifesto of the power of God. He was accredited in the wilderness. By the time he came out, they had opened power possibilities unto him. So when he came from that wilderness, he could no more go back to the carpentry shed. If you read that story very well, when he came out of the wilderness, his fame spread everywhere. That was how he appeared as it were, suddenly. But he came with something that was made in heaven. This was how Jesus Christ began to proclaim the kingdom, the power, and the glory of God. And he said, the works that I do, you will do the same. And you will do greater works because I'm going to the Father. My going to the Father is what will open the door for the era where the Holy Spirit will become the possibility of all men. And when you have received that Holy Spirit, hello, you are now in the visibility of power. How you order your life with the Holy Ghost will determine how much of his power you are accredited to wield. The Bible says that Jesus Christ was obedient to God in all things. All things. So when you, when you respond properly to government, the power of the Holy Spirit flows more easily in your life. And when it flows more easily in your life, you are able to bring greater witness to the fact that Jesus is not dead, that Jesus is still alive. Because then, by the same spirit that Jesus did miracles, signs, and wonders, now that you have the same spirit, and you have the power of that spirit, you will now carry the trademark of the family. Because the same person by which those effects were produced by the life of Jesus, the same person is now with you and his power is now available to you. For the early believers in Acts of the Apostles chapter 4, and when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were gathered together and they were filled with boldness with the, with the spirit and they were filled with the Holy Ghost and they spoke the word of God with boldness. Then the Bible says two verses later, with great power, with great power, with great power. Remember Jesus promised power. You shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. When they received the Holy Ghost in chapter 2, we saw the workings of power in chapter 3. When they received the Holy Ghost again in chapter 4, we are now told that now they have stepped up to great power. There is power. There is great power. I'd like for you to know that your journey in power is a continuum. There is no end to it. Are you with me? Whatever you have seen of God, there is more you can see of God. With greater compliance, brokenness, and obedience comes greater release of the spirit of power by the custodian of power. Even the Holy Spirit. If we are going to do the work that Jesus did and to even have possibilities of doing greater works than Jesus did, we can do none of that behind the Holy Spirit. He's a spirit of power. And this evening, transitions. Hello? People, we make transitions. This, there, are, there are some of you that Satan has laid a nest. Yes. Talk of you. Satan has set a trap for some of you. And your only saving grace, your only saving grace, as far as I can see, What at night?
something must come upon you to it once you into another man you know there's an there's another in the holy spirit hey, there's a version of your life that one is with god is in the holy spirit you will need to travel far into the Holy Ghost in order to lay hold on it. Some of us, you will more, a little bit more, a little bit more. Where there is a version of you that was designed for too old. I don't know what the latest Android is. If you are still running and you are one decade obsolete. You know, every... they ask you that you need to update it. Is it update? They call it. They ask you to update it. And so that if you do not update your WhatsApp, you will not be able to use it anymore. I like the old one. They say, no. If you don't update it. They will date. That after this date, if you don't my mom. Uh -uh. They say yes. There's a new version that has come out now. And that new version has new possibilities that the old version did not have. Some of you one of the recent updates that was done to WhatsApp gives you now ability to edit a message that you have sent. Isn't it? Right? Sometimes, like last year or so, they created a situation, a scenario now you can have a community. And in that community, you can have different, 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 different. Right? In the beginning of WhatsApp, it was not so. Even the fact that we can italicize words factory fitted with the original WhatsApp. Hello? So the WhatsApp is more versatile, can do a lot more than and if you have been using the same phone since that time for instance, you can just keep updating, 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 updating and with possibilities. The same way in the Holy Ghost. The Spirit of God comes again. And it comes to bring us updates. Updates. In the Spirit. Our updates are generally a, an opportunity for upgrade. By every update. There is a snare that Satan is laid for. We will get there in a short while. Your safety is in an upgrade. Your safety is in an upgrade that the Holy Ghost brings to us tonight. We we will pray for like five minutes, you know, and this was shaken where they were gathered together. The Bible says, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and they spake the word of God with boldness. You know why? Because even boldness is a spirit. Hello, hello, hello. Shy Peter. Peter that was fidgeting. Not shy. Fearful Peter. Fearful before a slave girl. When the Holy Ghost came upon Peter, he stood on the day of Pentecost and he's preaching to thousands with such audacity, authority, and boldness in the Holy Ghost. The same Peter now faces the same counsel that that conspired against Jesus and sent him to, the, to, to death. The same Peter stood before that same council and he's putting it to them. He said, we want you people to know that that same one that you killed, him as God raised from the dead and as all that, that it is only by him that rem remission of sins should be preached to all nations. Say, we are witnesses of these things and so also is the Holy Ghost that God has given to all them that obey him. What? What? What happened to Peter? He, there is boldness is a spirit. 
there's a spirit of boldness in the Holy Ghost. You know what? What you will become, what you will become, what you will become, if the Holy Spirit succeeds in your life, we will never know until the Holy Spirit truly succeeds in your life. And when I say we, that includes you. Even you, you don't know what you will become if the Holy Ghost were to succeed in your life. And so tonight, if I ever needed you, I need you now. There's a world that is waiting to see the works of Jesus. But it is not given unto man. It's not given unto man to walk the works of God. Only God can walk the works of God. And the way that God has chosen to walk his work is through the person of the Holy Ghost that he has decided to give to us as a personal gift. And so ladies and gentlemen, tonight I show you a secret that is not a secret. Our secret tonight is, and when they had prayed. If you have a mouth, you can pray. And when you have prayed, because God is not partial, when you have prayed, as it is God's custom to do, God answers prayer. And in a moment of time, we want to cry out to the Lord. How shall we walk the works of God without the God of the work? Holy Spirit, we call you in a dry and in a weary land where no water is to see your power and your glory. If you feel too conservative to pray for power for yourself, pray for power for me. Me, I need power. I want you to come before the Lord. And I want you to petition the Lord of the harvest for power. I hope you come around to pray. I can't go on like this. How am I going to do greater works when I cannot even do the works? I have known shame. I have known shame on the part of being a Christian. I have known shame. Lord, tonight, I am a man but you are God with great power with great power with great power with great power that's how I want to be a witness I want to be a witness witnessing with great power Not just with great swelling words. For the kingdom of God is not in word. But in power. I am waiting for you to start praying. Because when we pray. When we pray. He will answer. He will answer. Marenes Kebranatema. Set your case upon Jesus. If I ever needed you, I need you now. I love my and when they had prayed, there's a direct relationship between the prayer of the saints 
is the Holy Ghost, Spirit of the Living God. He is the Holy Ghost, Scepter of the King of Kings. He is the Holy Ghost, Spirit of the Age to Come. He's changing everything in obedience to Christ. He's changing everything in obedience to Christ. He is bringing everything in obedience to Christ. Holy Ghost, Spirit of the Living God, He is the Holy Ghost, Scepter of the King of Kings. He is the Holy Ghost, Spirit of the Age to Come. Peter's to Christ. Hey, his 
The same God answers us. I 
don't know about you. But it is so distressing. Jesus. And they live in a way that is not consistent with the way they would have left if they met Jesus. I needed you. I need you now. Were you not the one that said it was better for us for you to go? Why do you walk off? We need you more than yesterday. We need you more than. Therefore we cry. Therefore we call. Therefore we pray tonight. We need you. We need you. That tonight. With this traps, the traps set for your people. That tonight you will bring people across the line of limiting limitation that was drawn before them. This far and no farther. Lord, I will bring them across that threshold tonight. That they will break new grounds. By our lives and by our hands, we need you. That you will heal sick body. Here tonight, we need you. If we ever needed you, Lord, more than ever before, we need you now. Come in your strength and your power. Come in your own special way. We need you. Holy Spirit, we ask that you will bring us this up. For it is his good will to answer the desperate prayers of his people. And it is his nature to have mercy upon the sons of Jacob. That we might not be consumed. Lord, tonight we count on your unfailing mercy. Our prayers, though feeble they might be, we count more on your mercy. Because you've not forgotten how to be merciful. Therefore, that you that will come, will come and you will come tonight. In the name of Jesus. Let channels open in the hearts of your people. That there might be accommodation for the lodgement of the resources that you bring our way tonight. Boy, they receive you with joy and all in the name of Jesus. In the moment of time, I want to pray for two sets of people before I get out of your way. God sends us answers from heaven. There are a few persons that we experience an exodus tonight. So the Lord hold the hand of people and walk them across a line. Across a line. A line across. That line is a mascot of limitation. It may be placed before you that holds your progression and your advancement. Tonight, Jesus takes people's hands, walks them across the line, bring you across the threshold. He will bring you across that limit. Tonight, Jesus answers the prayer. There is a release of oils, of graces, 
of mandates. Some of us received it already. Some of us received it already and we know. Some of us are waiting and we will receive it. And finally tonight, Jesus will touch sick bodies. It is one of his pleasures to heal. I'm going to start in the middle to the first item and to the last item in quick succession. And I'll be out. There are three people under the sound of my voice. Uniquely, I saw that clearly. The Lord will bring an anointing upon your life that changes your life radically after tonight. This trip have stood in the place of application in the Holy Ghost for quite a while. With great desire, you have desired. Your desire has registered in the courts of the mercies of God. And to of the abundance of his mercy by the power of the Holy Ghost. An anointing, an anointing comes upon your bosom. And it will be obvious that the fires of something comes upon you out of the heavens. Long you tarried in the place of intercession. You are prayed for visitation of the Lord. And now God wants to make you one of the instruments of that visitation. And bring for the next phase of work that you must do upon you. An anointing comes by the Holy Ghost upon those three. And afterwards. The Lord will push people into their ordination. Those people that stand, the Lord will take them across. And afterwards, Jesus will heal bodies. And so inside this hall and outside this hall, Jesus will begin to anoint men and women. The power of the Holy Ghost, the power of the Holy Ghost will come. And there will be no less than three. There are three people uniquely that God is bringing an anointing upon their lives. Jesus. And when they had prayed, feeble though you are full of mercy. And in your mercy, your mercy, you touch down in this place. So wherever you are now, the hand of the Lord is coming, is coming, is coming. In the next five seconds, there's an anointing of the Lord. East, upon men, upon women, those that have been waiting, expecting the day of the manifestation of the power of God in their lives. Tonight, Jesus answers by fire. He answers. He answers. Inside. Online. On site. He answers. And locations are arriving. And locations. And locations. And locations of people are arriving now. Answers are coming out of the heaven. They come in the shape of a fiery anointing. Yes. He answers. He answers. He answers. He answers. He answers. He 
In five seconds, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, it is your pleasure to bring fiery anointing the sound of my voice. So now, Lord, friend, majesty, by your determined counsel. We must put your power now. Right from the back to the front, from the left to the right, from the right to the left, on site and online. Now in power, let your location in the anointing, let it arrive now. Receive it wherever you are, wherever you are, three of you, wherever you are. Receive it, receive it. Aha. Holy Ghost. Aha. 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 Holy Ghost. What? System B. Two. Holy Ghost. Three. System B. Four. Look like you. Holy Ghost. System B. We have prayed. Five. Yes. 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 Insist on me. Holy Ghost. That is it. 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 It's an allocation in the anointing. That is it. Like fire shot up in your bones. That is it. 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 It overflows. It overflows. A brother, one more person, a brother, wherever you are, if you may, you may be quiet, if you can. There's a brother under the sound of my voice. God is literally about to deposit fire in your bosom, in your belly. Wherever you are, take it. 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 It's your location. Yes. Yes. Take it. Let it rise up within. It brings vitality. It brings boldness. It brings efficacy. Aha. Aha, it's it's getting stronger, it's intensifying. It's intensifying. It's intensifying. In a moment of time. In a moment of time. It will land. It will overflow. It will break forth. Take it. Take it. Let it rise. Take it. 
Take it, let it rise. Take it. Take it, let it rise. Take it. Take it, let it rise. Take it. Take it. Let it rise. Unless you take over. Cannot do it by myself. Unless you take over. I cannot do it on my own. Unless you take over. Rafina Cobre fighting Cove and is easy at Tabi or Cove. Unless you take now, one of the pray. I want to under the sound of my voice that I've dealt with monic limits and limitations, lines the enemy drew that you may never cross. Jesus wants to take your hand. And walk you across it. In a moment of time. You will feel the fires of that transition on your feet. Your two feet will burn as with fire. There's about two persons. Two persons. Jesus about to bring a transition. A transition. You have stood long. You stood long. You stood long. Knocking. Knocking, you stood long. Oh, fire. Jesus, tonight, Holy Ghost, he will take your hand burn and he brings you across oh, that line. Oh, fire. And then a new season of Holy progress Ghost, and progression burn. will open before you. Oh, and in the moment of time, fire. the fire of that. Holy Ghost fire. That fire will burn on your feet everywhere oh, in a moment of time. Oh, fire. Please keep your gaze upon Jesus. Holy Ghost fire burn. Oh, fire. In the name of Holy Ghost fire burn everywhere. Oh. In the name of Jesus. May be quiet if you can. There are two people. Two people. God is about to open the doors of progress and progression. Progress and progression. Two people. Two people. Jesus is about to take you across the demonic line the demonic line of stagnation that was drawn that you could not cross. I saw Jesus hold hands and bring them across. And right now, that fire of transition, it will burn on the feet of the second person. Wherever you are, the fire of transition, it will burn now. It will burn now. It will burn now. It will burn now. Jesus, Jesus, let there be a transition. Let there be a crossing over. 
Let there be a going across. Let there be a going across. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Actually, there is more than two people, but they seem, they signal, they signal will be those. There's at least seven persons that we witness dramatic, drastic, radical shift after tonight. But two of you will be the sign that it is done. And Lord, wherever the second sign is, let the feet burn now. Let the fire fall. Let the fire fall. Aha. Because it is your good pleasure to see your people advance into their ordination and destiny. Bring us all out. All out. All out. Of every word that we have stole and stagnated because the enemy fought us sore tonight you will conquer you will go on conquering and so right now wherever that person is the fire of the Lord is about to burn it will burn it will burn your faith your faith will not be able to carry you because the fire burns Holy Spirit let there be mass exodus now. Yes. 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 And wherever that fellow is, let it burn. 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 There are many persons, no fewer than seven, that are transitioning. But the Lord said, Two, 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 two is the number. Two is the number. And the fire burns. And so I declare tonight, everyone that stands halted on account of the activity of the resistance of darkness. Tonight, tonight, I speak advance. I speak over your life. Advance. I say advance. 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 In the name of Jesus. The chains are broken. The fetters, the fetters are caught in the name of Jesus. I speak to those chains, break in the name of Jesus. The Lord takes you by the hand. The Lord brings you over and across in the mighty name of Jesus. You will not stagnate. You will not mark time. You will not be held down. You will not be held back. You will go from grace to grace. Power to power. Glory to glory. Your path like the path of the just. It shines brighter and brighter. In the mighty name of Jesus. Live him, live him, live him, live him. In the name of Jesus. Finally, before I run out of your way, before I run out of your way, you under the sound of my voice tonight, there's an infirmity in your body. Jesus delights to heal the sick. Jesus delights to heal the sick. So if there's any infirmity in your body tonight, Jesus wants to give you relief. And that he might put his work on display. To the end. That it might be evident, obviously. That he is alive and not dead. So you under the sound of my voice, I want to do this. In less than 20 seconds. You under the sound of my voice. There's an ailment, there's a sickness. There's an infirmity, a weakness, a disease. I want you to place your right hand on your head as I pray. Or you can place it on your chest, whichever works for you. In 
the name of Jesus. I want you to receive this declaration with your spirit. I have instructions from the Lord to not shout when I pray for the sick. So I'm not going to shout. In the name of Jesus. I release upon this house the hand of the Lord in its healing dimension and measure. And I rebuke sicknesses, diseases, and infirmities from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. I declare tonight that Jesus sets you free. I rebuke the demons that cause infirmities and diseases. I bind them. I cast them out of your system. I come against spirit of infirmities that bind, that tighten, that blur, blurring visions, blurring eyesight. I declare that it clears off tonight. I rebuke the blinding spirit. I rebuke deafening spirit. I rebuke crippling spirit. Amen. So arthritis be gone. Amen. Go now. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I come against asthma. And the spirit responsible for it. Amen. Out in the name of Jesus. Amen. Out and never to return. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I come against pain in the lower back. I come against pain in the lower back. Amen. I yank you out of the bodies of God's people. Be gone. Be gone. Go in the name of Jesus. I come against troubles in the spine, troubles in the liver, troubles in the heart, troubles in the kidney. I restore health to your system. Health to your systems in the name of Jesus. I come against impotence. I come against barrenness. Be gone in the name of Jesus. I declare the normalization of irregular monthly periods. Normalize. 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 In the name of Jesus. Somebody under the sound of my voice suffers something that is like a never ending uh, 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 Qatar. Your nose trills. Either always blocked, always running. Tonight. Tonight, I curse, I curse that infirmity to its root. Amen. I uproot it out of your system. Amen. And so now I declare from the crown of your head, everyone under the sound of my voice, to the, feet, to the soles of your feet, let times of refreshing come upon you. Amen. Yes, receive a refreshing. Amen. Receive a refreshing. Amen. Oh, he sent forth his word and healed them. And his word delivered them from their destruction. You are delivered from every trap of the enemy. You will not be destroyed. You are healed. In the name of Jesus. You are healed. The son of righteousness rises over your life. With healings in his wings. Jesus sets you free. You are healed. You are healed. You are healed. Believe me, you are healed. You are healed. You are healed. And you are healed. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Open your eye. I'd like you to, I need you to know that the Spirit of God will be at work around the clock as you go to sleep. When you wake tomorrow, as you come back here tomorrow evening, as the case may be. For how many days, I don't know. But men will keep rising with testimonies. In the we will take a few testimonies tomorrow. But before I ailment in your body. You are on site, you are online, you are outside or you are inside here. If it's something that can be examined, I want you to check it now. Like now. If you had problem with your vision, I'd like for you to try to read what you could do. If you had problem with your ear, you couldn't bend, you couldn't stretch. 
I want you to, in the next 10 seconds, to do something you could not do ordinarily. Run and check. 10 seconds. 10 seconds. You could not do before. 10 seconds. 10, 9, 8. 5, 4. 1. Like I said, we take testimonies tomorrow. Changed in your body this evening. Jesus touched your body. Move it. You can see. You can hear. Whatever it is, you can. We we are way out of our time. Run a check, and let me see if Jesus did something for you. Raise your hand if Jesus in your body. We preach to mind. Keep running that check until I drop this mic. And if you have information, just raise your hand. I want to take a raise. This is your father's house. Don't be ashamed to. Don't, eh? If you need space, ask somebody's space so that you can try it out. Try it out. Try it out. Try it out. Let me see your hand. If it, keep checking. If it changes, if you confirm it change. Something change. Raise your hand above your head. Let me see. Clearly above your head. Let me see so I can see from here. I, okay. Are there any persons outside that are raising their hand? Any persons outside that are raising their hands? Are there any persons online? You have a testimony. Just, just, just indicate. We can't take. If you check, something has changed. And keep checking, and when you confirm, raise your hand. Okay, okay the hands are increasing. Keep checking if if confirm. Oh. Okay, right, the hands are increasing. The best 